So, Logic Pro now has a pretty fancy step sequencer with a lot of really nice cool tricks. Now in this video, let's try to answer the question, can Studio One do that? Super C. So, Apple has just released the latest version of Logic Pro, Logic Pro 10.5, was released on May 12th. 2020. Now it's arguably the biggest release since Logic Pro 10. Um, it has a, some really nice new features and one of those features is what they call the step sequencer. Now what is the step sequencer? Well, let's take a look at what they say on the website. So step sequencer, pure beat poetry. Uh, step sequencer is inspired by classic drum machines and synthesizers using step sequence editor, quickly build drum beats, bass lines and melodic parts, and even automate your favorite plugins. Add sophisticated variations to your patterns with a wide range of creative playback behavior. Use note repeat to create rolling steps, chance to randomize step playback and tie steps together to create longer notes. Wow. So basically what it is, it's very similar to a conventional MIDI editor, which you should find in any DAW nowadays. So very similar to that, but it's more advanced. So you could call it a MIDI editor plus. Um, now I had been a Logic Pro user for many years in the past. So I'm still kind of proud that they added this feature to, to Logic Pro, finally. Now anyway, the question of today is, can Studio One do that? Well, let's take a look. Okay, now here we are in Studio One. Now, as you can see, I already have two tracks. On the first track, I've loaded an instance of Impact, Impact XT, which is a drum sampler uh, that comes with Studio One Professional and Studio One Artist, I believe. Now, what we can do now is create a part by simply double clicking. Okay, now if we double click the part, you'll see that a MIDI editor appears. This is just your standard conventional MIDI editor. But that is not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is what in Studio One is called a pattern. Okay, now to do that, we can either right click the part and then convert part to pattern. Or if we go back one more step and then hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and then double click and now we have a pattern. Now a pattern in Studio One, similarly to the step sequencer in Logic Pro, in many ways is a lot like a MIDI editor, a classic MIDI editor, but then with just some more features and some more options. Okay, now let me give you a little demonstration. Now obviously we can click any of the cells we like, like this or we can use some of the presets to make it a bit easier. Okay, now let's press play and let's just play around with this a little bit. Okay, now already we have a little beat going, but now we want to add some hi-hats. Yeah, that'll do. Um, now, of course, again, we can use one of the presets, something like this. Now, this will probably sound okay. Let's listen. But it's a little bit boring. So what we can do to spice it up a little bit, let me first clear this lane. As you can see, the step length of this pattern is 16. So the, this pattern has 16 steps, which means that it loops after 16 steps. We can change that if we want to. So we can change it to, to 12 or to 32 or to up to 64. Let's switch it back to 16 for now. What we can also do is change the step length of individual lanes. So let's change the length of this a lane, step length of this lane to, let's say, seven. Okay, now let's fill some of the cells. Something like this. And 
You know, what will happen to this lane is instead of looping after 16 steps, it will loop after 7 steps. And only this lane, you know, so that makes for a very interesting um, addition to this beat. So let's listen what this does. So as you can hear, it immediately adds some, some complexity to the beat. Now what we can also do, if we open up the automation lanes down here, is mess with the velocity, for example. So we are still on the hi-hat lane, the hi-hat track, whatever you want to call it. Um, and as you can see by default, the velocity is set to 60. But of course we can change that, so let's mess with that. Okay, now we can also have repeats. So let's repeat this one twice, for example. We can also add delays. So we can delay any note by a certain amount of milliseconds, maybe to, uh, to add some, uh, some humanization to it all. And then we can also mess with the probability. Now, by default, the probability is set to 100%, which means that whenever the playhead comes around, the note will play 100% of the time. But we can change that, of course. Uh, so let's set this um, probability to somewhere around 50. And I think you can guess what'll happen, but let's just listen to what it does. So a few more examples of what you can do with patterns and these, these features can just add some more character and some more complexity to any beat. Now we can also have different variations because let's open up this window right here. So you can see that this is only variation one. What we can do is copy this variation and now we have variation one and variation two. Now let's make a little bit, um, some changes to variation two, let's go. Okay, now, now we can duplicate this pattern, make the first pattern variation one, and the second one variation two. Let me increase the loop length, and let's hear what it sounds like now. Okay, it's not earth shattering, but I think you get the, the, uh, the idea. Uh, and now, of course, I can copy this over, I can copy this one over, and you know, the possibilities are really endless. Now, we can also use patterns with melodic instruments. Uh, so as you can see on the, the second track, I have an instance of Mojito. And let's add another pattern here. And you know, it, it patterns for melodic instruments is basically the same. It's just that now you're seeing some kind of piano roll kind of thing, but the basic principle is exactly the same. So let's try to come up with something here. Well, might not be a number one hit, I don't know, but uh, anyway, again, I think you get the idea. So that's just a quick overview of what patterns in Studio One is and what it can do. Uh, but let's go back to the question. So Logic Pro's step sequencer, can Studio One do that? Well, I would say yes. 
I mean, there are still some little differences here and there. So one of the things that I noticed that Logic Pro step sequencer can do is mess with the direction of individual lanes or the equivalent of lanes. So you can have it go forward, you can have it go backwards or forward and backwards, you know, so you can mess with that. And as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not possible in Studio One at this moment, you know? So there might be some other little differences, but I think that this patterns is similar enough for me to say that Logic Pro Step Sequencer, yes, Studio One can do that. Now, as I mentioned, I really love Logic Pro, even though I haven't used it in several years, but still, I'm somehow still very happy that Apple added this feature to Logic Pro. Uh, and as Studio One is my main DAW at the moment, I'm also very happy that Studio One has patterns. You know, so whether you're a Logic Pro user or a Studio One user, you can take advantage of one of those great features that can help you creating beats or you know, it, it can just help get your creativity going, you know, so great tools to have. So that's about it for now. But before I go, let me ask you, so what do you think of patterns? If you're a Studio One user, of course, uh, or are you a Logic Pro user? In that case, then have you already tried the step sequencer? What do you think of it? So very eager to hear about your experiences. Let me know, leave a comment below. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. For now, I'm going to thank you for watching and I will talk to you very soon.